Great, we are in version 2 and I'll try to be quick now and show you version 3. Uh, this is version 3 and uh, the way I implemented this uh, functionality where, where I want to check if there is an address column in the data frame is by adding a try and expect statement. Mm, so basically, if you can see the difference is I get the file and then I try to read that file or this this could also be outside of the try keyword that wouldn't be a problem and GC outside of the try keyword as well however this is still better because uh, you may also want to check for users sending files that are not CSV so uh, here we're checking actually that uh, the user is submitting a CSV file however mm, that only means that the file has a .csv extension in the file name uh, however, that doesn't mean that the file is actually CSV. So you, you may have, let's say, an MP4 file and you have changed that the extension to CSV, but that's still an MP, MP4 file. So what you want to do is mm, you want to include DF inside the try and expect block. If Python is not being able to create a data frame out of an MP4 file, uh, then it will throw an error. So that and that's what actually happens if you pass an mp4 file uh, you, you wouldn't be able to, to read it as a data frame so yeah you want to include that in here uh, then you return the same so I haven't changed anything here you return the same template uh, index.html and you send the HTML there and the button except if there is an error uh, what you do is you return the index.html but then, instead of the HTML table, you want to return this message. And of course, you don't want to return any any download button in there. And yeah, that should do it. And that's about version 3, so those, are, those were the differences. Now, version 4, what I have there. Uh, well, if you see here, we got this geocoded CSV file. Now, that's a string. And that means that a, a geocoded .csv file will be created for, for all the users that will be submitting data. Now that may cause some problems. Because if uh, two users are submitting data at the same time, you may have some name clashes there. So what you could do here is you could use a date time module to generate unique names for every generated file. And that's what I did. So here is version 4. I imported the date time module in here and then um, I'm generating the geocoded CSV file in here um, so df to CSV file name and I made this file name global in here because I also want to access it from the uh, download function in here so again I want to generate that in here I'm generating a, a file name and then in the file name we have the upload string uh, which will point to the file, to the directory where, where this file will be. And then we have the slash. And actually this plus shouldn't be there. So just after the slash we have the file name. And that would be, you know, we have year. And then we have the month and then the day and then the hour and the minutes and seconds and milliseconds and then uh, the C .csv extension in the file name. So yeah, this is quite unique uh, for, for every user because we have milliseconds in there. But let me show you how this looks like, actually. So again, the user chooses a file, submit, and when they press submit, a Python will generate a, that data frame at it, and it will also generate uh, this CSV file. So in this line here. And you can now find that CSV file in the uploads folder. So this was this was generated earlier and this is uh, the file. That's the file that we just generated. And then when the user presses download, that file will be downloaded but with uh, your file name, uh, which is this one here. And yeah, what happens is that the download function will get the path of the file that that it has to download in the browser. Will get the file name from uh, this 
global variable. That's why I am passing this as a global variable so that I can access the value of it, which is generated in here. I, I can access this value from another function. And yeah, that's my version of the application. I know this is not like your version. I hope you were close as much as possible. And it would be great if you, if you did it better than me. In either case, I'm sure that uh, trying to solve this application should have improved your, your problem solving skills uh, in Python. Because that at least will position you, so will define your level, your Python level. So that you can fill the gaps that you really think are not your, your strongest points. And yeah, that was about this lecture, and I'll see you.